Hey, y'all wonder hussy here. Just rolling along on a solo trip through the middle of nowhere. Stayed at a beautiful hot springs last night, but this morning, well, the weather took a turn for the nasty, so I thought I would chase what little blue skies there were and see what was up this way. And I had kind of two options. See, up in this part of the country, I'm in the middle of nowhere, Nevada, there's really not a lot of gas stations, so I have to be very careful which way I go. And I sure don't want to go back to Vegas. So the closest gas stations were either Ely or Tonopah. And I didn't really want to go up to Ely because Ely is really cold. And well, anyway, long story short, I decided to head Tonopah-ish, but there were a few different route options. And I was gonna take the paved road, which would have allowed me just enough gas to get to Tonopah. But then I saw there was a dirt road option. Now, the off-road route is always an unknown quantity, but where I was camped last night, I actually had pretty good 4G cell signal. So I was able to peep at the route uh, using Google Maps on satellite and really get a look at it. And I consulted my Atlas and boy, I'm glad I did consult my Atlas because, well, I saw something marked on the Atlas that I didn't actually know about. And it's this little stone cabin in the middle of nowhere. Boy, I'm really glad I took the path less traveled on this one. I mean, most people would probably say the smart decision would have just been to take the paved route, especially, well, it being so remote up here, there not being very many gas stations and, well, up here there's zero cell signal. But you know what? If you always take the smart way, you never have any fun. So man, I just off-roaded all the way across this meadow and valley and up over a range of hills and through a cow pasture. In fact, the cow pasture almost made me turn around because I couldn't see where the road went on. The cows had all trampled the, the well, the road at that point was just a pair of tracks that were pretty seldom used. And the cows had trampled it so badly I couldn't even see where it went beyond the cows, but I sort of very cautiously crept through the cows, you know, hey fellas, sorry, don't mean you any harm. And they didn't seem bothered. They probably thought I was just the rancher there to, you know, feed them or vaccinate them or something. Anyway, I'm babbling again. I uh, made it all the way up over these hills and there were times when I thought, what am I doing, dude? This is barely a two track, <laughs> not even that. But I'm glad I did because, yeah, man, I made it to this awesome little stone cabin. Check this out. Okay, first of all, just to remind you of where we're at, we're in an extremely desolate mountain valley. And, well, it's pretty windy. You can see the windmills going. <laughs> but it looks like there was a little homestead here. At some point, I'm going to say in the way distant past because that cabin looks old. So it looks like we can just walk up along here and poke our nose in. Now I parked my car, just to show you, uh, back alongside the road there. There's a little, actually there's a little fire ring next to me. It looks like a really cool place to camp. Unfortunately, I'm not trying to camp up here tonight. It's at elevation and it's gonna be chilly. So I'm just gonna stop and look around the cabin for a little bit and then take off and try to find some place warmer to camp, which, well, to be honest, I think I'm kind of out of luck. It's just cold everywhere up here this time of year, which by the way, it is March. <laughs> like March, I don't even know what it is today, March 8th or 9th or 10th around in there somewhere. So you'd think it'd be springtime, but not here. Still have all these beautiful fall colors on these bushes. Oh, wow, look. Okay, you can't even see my car. It's behind those sagebrush, but I hiked down through this wash and then there's a little trail leading up to the cabin there. And look down here in the sandy wash, you can see my footprints and you can also see <laughs> some critters footprints. <laughs> Yikers. All right, let's go up this trail and check out this cabin. Oh my goodness. Now, <laughs> this looks old. I don't care who you are. Made out of stone and rough hewn at that. Looks like they did kind of put mud in between the rocks to keep out the wind. But I mean, the, the thing that really strikes me is the roof. I got to back up to show you guys the roof. Look at the roof. I mean, that's just... Uh, branches from trees which there are trees up here we are uh well you, <laughs> i guess there's what passes for trees up here or maybe there used to be trees here until they cut them all down for this friggin roof anyway there are i did drive through some trees so there's branches from these trees and then it looks like they just laid like 
gosh, more branches across, like almost like a woven type thing, and then dump dirt on top of that. I mean, that's an old timey roof. That reminds me of like a Saudi, like you would see in Nebraska or something. Let's see if I can get a better view on the roof. Okay, I climbed way up on this rock here. So now we're just sort of overlooking the whole site. And you can see what I was talking about with that roof. <laughs> that is some rustic homespun materials. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm surprised the dirt doesn't just get blown off, you know? I guess it was mud. They probably packed mud over top of it. And then look at that friggin' chimney. Man, there's gonna be some fireplace in there. Anyways, while we're up here, let's take a look around. Unfortunately, I can't tell you anything about where we are because I don't even know where we are. <laughs> we're literally just sort of out in the middle of nowhere, Nevada. I think we're on page 70 of the Benchmark Atlas, if you have a Benchmark Atlas for the state of Nevada. So this homestead looks like, well, they had a little windmill there with a well, I guess. And then it looks like a, this was some kind of corral. So they probably had horses, cattle, both, who knows. And then that was about it. Just this lonely little cabin. So I don't know, I think we should go check out inside the cabin. Okay, before we go in the cabin, I went over to the windmill just to see what was going on over here. And I'm not sure if it was a well or if they were <laughs> pumping oil. <laughs> I don't know, the only thing I've ever seen that looked like that is an oil rig, it's, you know, in Bakersfield. But that could be a well. I don't know, you guys tell me. Anybody know anything about wells? My friend Mike knows a lot about oil rigs, but I don't know if he's watching this video. Huh, interesting, let's see. This stuff looks real rusted over and old, so I'm guessing they're not doing anything here anymore. We see anything down there? No, it's pretty dark, huh? Oh, it looks like there's a ladder going down there, though. Why would there be a ladder going down into a water well? But why would there be a ladder going down into an oil well, for that matter? Huh. Oh, dang. Well, you probably can't see, and I don't have my flashlight with me, but I do see daylight reflecting on some water down there. And there is a ladder. <sighs> I could climb down there, I suppose, but ugh. I'm not that dedicated. Or stupid. <laughs> I mean, maybe we can just figure this out on our own. So it looks like they're, whatever they were drilling out of there, pumping out of there, uh, was being carried through this pipeline to that stock tank. So, I mean, that pretty much, let's go look at it. That pretty much uh, means it was water, if you ask me. I don't know any cows that drink oil. <laughs> Only horse, horsepower. Yeah, see, that pipe goes right into this big old stock tank where the cows drank or the horses drank or whatever. So, okay, it was probably just a water well. Interesting. There's my car trying to hide. Don't try to hide from me, man. We're got we got a lot of places to go. <laughs> oh wow, look at the gate to the corral, man. Look at this solid old wooden gate. That's cool. Man, I wonder if they made I guess they made all this stuff by hand, you know, way out here. It's not like they could go to Lowe's and have them cut the boards to size. <laughs> Dang. All right, now we're gonna go walk and check out the cabin. Man, I am having such a friggin' good time on this trip. <laughs> I don't, I've only been gone, well, about 24 hours. And I, I just wanted to go someplace alone. You know, sometimes you want to be alone because I've been having some interpersonal drama with various people in my life lately. And I don't know. I just want to go out, explore, get some fresh air, some sunshine. And, you know, shoot videos at my own pace without having to worry about other people being bored or, you know, if I travel with friends, sometimes it feels like I'm holding them back because I always want to stop and shoot everything. So it's really nice, just me and my rig, wandering around free. I'm just limited by my gas, that's all. Okay, on the way to the cabin, we passed this old oil drum, which looks, I don't know, pretty old, what does it say? Something United States? Wilmington, Delaware. Oh, wow. This uh, oil barrel came a long way. Oh, it's just full of garbage now. Huh. I wonder if Republic Services ever comes to pick up this trash. I doubt it. I guess it's better than leaving it on the ground, though, like somebody did here with this spam can. I mean, for real, way out here. Jeez. Okay, anyways, let's check out inside this cabin. This little, well, I was going to call it a soddy, but it's not made out of sod. Just the roof is covered in mud. It's a stony, <laughs> my kind of place. Wow, look at this thing. An old one-room cabin. Can you guys imagine? Oh, my goodness. 
Yikers. Man, it's cold in here too. Definitely feel the chill. Oh, wow. Okay, so I'm going to do a piano. We just have one room that we're looking at here. Pretty simple. There's that big stone fireplace. And then there's just one window there by the door. And then there's the door we came in. So let's just start right here next to the door. What do we have here? Well, we've got some nails for hanging your jacket when you get home from work. Oh, and then I'm that to me looks like a stove pipe. I don't know why there'd be, well, I guess they had a stove and a fireplace. So this must have been where they had like a little pot-bellied stove or something, right? And then on the inside here, you can really see what I was talking about where I said they chinked the cracks between the rocks with mud. I mean, I guess that did something to keep out the breeze. Oh, my bad. There it was another window. There's another window on this wall. And then there's something stuck in it that's got some trash lovingly stored. I don't know why people like to come to these old places and just get drunk and then leave their bottles and cans behind. But hey, what do I know? All right, well, moving along. Somebody left this really kind of creepy old jean jacket or yeah jean jacket it can't be that old because it's a stonewash jacket you know stonewash that was like an 80s thing but no it's not like it's from the 1800s wow this thing is toast look at it oh but it's an old levi jacket yeah levi strauss those can be worth some money if they're old but i don't think this one's old enough Ugh, i don't even want to touch it Blah. all right and then well Moving along, looks like they had some shelf or something there, maybe. There's also nails stuck in the little board there along the top, all along the way to hang things. I guess pots and pans and whatnot. Oh, wow, look, here's some graffiti on this rock. September of 83, Dave, Larry, and Joe came here. <laughs> okay, wow, I just, a whole movie just came into my mind based on this graffiti. It's a picture that says September 1983. It's three army buddies. Well, they all went to high school together in Tonopah. And they're, they finally got back from the army and now they're, you know, at that in-between phase trying to figure out what they want to do with the rest of their lives. So they all decided to get in. Uh, Dave, Dave had a, oh, Dave had one of those old Chevy Suburbans. So they all got into Dave's Suburban and came out here for a weekend. And they were all wearing those jean jackets with the, the sheepskin lining and like trucker caps and aviator shades. Remember, this is 1983. And they probably had a, a six pack of cold Coors Light. Maybe they even had those little banquet beers. Who knows? They came up here and talked about what they were going to do with the rest of their lives. What, you know, what girls they were seeing, who knocked up whom, that kind of thing. And then, well, sadly... Dave, Larry, and Joe, if you're watching this video, <laughs> I'm going to bet that at least one of you ended up with an opioid addiction. One of you ended up on uh, disability and with five kids by three different women. And the third one of you, I'm going to guess, went on to, oh, you know what? Maybe Joe. Maybe Joe was kind of like the nerdy one. Like Dave and Larry always made fun of him because he was always reading. Well, maybe Joe went on and made something of himself, like went to college and that little Joe from Tonopah, Nevada, who was in the army and then came up here drinking beer with his friends, went on to become, well, I don't know what he went on to become. Maybe a senator, maybe a policeman, maybe a postman. Who can say? Oh my God. Okay. Enough with this graffiti. Look, here's an even older graffiti, but you can't really make it out. looks like it says 65. Wow. Huh. Good thing it's faded away. I can't start making up stories about that one. Oh, wow. Look at the ceiling from in here. You can really see. It looks like those fences in New Mexico that they make out of sticks. I mean, this is intense. This is the kind of dwelling you build with the materials at hand, you know? Dang. But all that being said, I don't know how old it is, but it's still in pretty good shape. So the construction was solid, especially because I bet it gets real windy out here. You can see they, there's some kind of like cord or wire or something around that one log. So I guess everything's strapped down pretty well. Okay, now we're on the other wall over here by the fireplace, and you can see there's nails up along the top there, too, to hang things. And, well, there's the hearth. Big ol' hearth. Somebody even thoughtfully left some firewood in here. Could probably get this place pretty warm, I'm guessing. Uh, really not much in the old fireplace, but somebody did leave a bottle, an empty bottle, of Moose Drool Brown Ale. Anybody here ever drink Moose Drool? <laughs> From Big Sky Brewing Company in Missoula, Montana. Love Missoula. I've been there myself and it's a great little town in an extremely beautiful part of the country with some amazing hot springs all around it. Check it out sometime. Anyway, uh, also looks like somebody was here. 
<laughs> Chawing some tobacco. Why, that's just plum country. You know, that might have been <laughs> Dave, Larry, and Joe. I mean, that, those cans of, of uh, chaw aren't old enough, but I'll bet you anything Dave, Larry, and Joe had some chaw on them too. Oh, look, there's some more graffiti up here on this cross beam. Let's check this out. So you can see going right across the middle of the cabin, there's like kind of a cross beam. And then it's got a support pillar in the middle, which everybody seems to kind of write their name on. I mean, even up here we got... Looks like people do come up here. This guy was here in 2015. 2014 I can't really read that 13 14 uh can't really read that one here on the pole we got a we got a 2014 we got a a 2010 oh gosh I don't know I haven't seen anything from 2020 might be the first one we got somebody with the hashtag heavy. That's pretty current because hashtags aren't that old. Oh, here, look. Elder Andrews. I must be a Mormon. Because isn't that what they call themselves? Elders? 1820. Well, I was going to say he was here in 2020, but what the hell is 1820? It's not a date. Huh. And then look, Elder Jensen was also there on 1820. So a couple of Mormon elders out for a time in 1820 on 1820. Oh my gosh, what does that even mean? Is that some weird Mormon kind of timekeeping? I don't know, guys. If you can figure it out, let me know. Then look down here. Al. Al was here in 1981. 1-3, 1981. See, that's how you write a friggin' date. January 3rd, 1981. I can read that. This, I'm just bamboozled by. I mean, if it was 1-8-20, that'd make sense. But 18? I mean, where's the month? Where's the beef? Okay, wow. Well... That's pretty much all there is to look at in this cabin. Unfortunately, there's nothing really left to pick through. But, wow, what a great sight. Holy moly, this landscape is amazing. Oh, wow, it feels like Hawaii out here after how cold it was in that cabin. Nice. Anyway, I guess I'm going to get back in my rig and roll on. This was just a brief pit stop for me because I've got some other stuff pinned on my map I want to check out. I mean, for being the middle of nowhere, this part of Nevada is actually chock full of interesting places to make videos at. So stay tuned. I'm, I've got about five more days of food and water with me in my car. Assuming I can make it to a gas station, I should be out on the road for at least a few more days. And no telling what kind of cool stuff I'll find. See you next time.